Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been just out for a walk when maybe you come across a store or a restaurant that you didn't even know was there? It catches your eye and you decide, eh, yeah, why not? What have I got to lose? And it ends up hitting the spot so hard that you can't help but think how happy you are that you decided to give it a shot to begin with. Hi, my name is Fallout and this is my review of Helldivers 2. If you end up liking this style of video and want more, let me know by giving the video a like or leave a handwritten note on my fogged up mirror when I'm in the shower, either or. If you don't know me, I'm a Destiny 2 player and I like finding other games to play during my routine seasonal downtime. While some games get the coveted dub and manage to hold my attention longer than expected, others flare up but then peter out fairly quickly. My community had given a couple recommendations on things to play, which eventually boiled down to me trying out either Skull and Bones or Helldivers 2. And let me tell you, thank fuck I chose the latter. If you know nothing about the Helldivers universe or didn't play or even know of the existence of the first game, don't worry, you're not alone. To put it very simply, Helldivers 2 is Starship Troopers in video game form. And I don't only mean that in the sense of shoot space bugs, but overall tone as well. As a hell diver, you and your squad mates have the simple and straightforward goal of defending super earth and spreading peace and democracy across the galaxy to all who would threaten sweet liberty and our way of life. It's all very tongue in cheek and darkly hilarious. The basic gameplay loop admittedly is repetitive and not very deep, but not only does it work, it's strangely addicting in a way that I can't fully explain. Squad up with the homies, pick your loadout, drop onto a foreign planet, spread righteous democracy to everyone and everything, complete mission objectives, try to stay alive, extract off the planet, do finger guns back on the ship, excitedly unlock new ways to improve your arsenal, then go pick a new mission and do it all over again. That's it. That's the entire game. But again, as repetitive as that sounds, Helldivers is such a joy to play that you can easily let double digit hours go by before realizing that Damn, you forgot to eat lunch. There's a big catch though. While you can play the game solo, it is a hard recommendation from me that you do not attempt to do so. Yeah, you'll still get enjoyment out of the game, but it's akin to going to a miniature golf course by yourself. It is an experience that was fundamentally designed to be enjoyed as a group. You can always try to fire up quick play or join a random fire team out in the wild. That experience is slightly better as missions become easier with a team and you have more breathing room to experience the full breadth of your deadly arsenal without getting completely reamed. However, the best way to play by a long shot is with friends on the mic and Helldivers 2 delivers in that particular category hard. You'll have feelings of pride when completing a hard mission or taking down a titan with your hand-selected arsenal, and you'll laugh when someone gets surprised railroaded by a charger, blows themselves up with a railgun, or does any number of things that can go wrong when trying to spread democracy. And I know this may not be a huge selling point to some people, but the soundtrack is unexpected fire. And with that, a quick demonstration. The volume's gonna be up for just a few seconds, but it's important. Whoever composed the soundtrack of Helldivers 2 didn't need to go this this hard, but they did. And if you don't crank this every time you drop into a mission the first few times you play, not only do I think we can't be friends, you're also probably dead inside. Might want to talk to a doctor about that. One big question that folks have asked me over and over again is with the gameplay loop being what it is, how long do I think that people can play Helldivers without getting bored? Honestly, I can't give you an answer to that because the answer will be different from person to person. I imagine that in general, some people may burn out on this relatively quickly. However, However, those who are into the four player co-op shooter niche could be entertained for quite a while with this in the same way that folks are still diehard lovers of other well-made games that feel vaguely similar like Deep Rock Galactic. Rock and Stone! I've heard some critiques that people are hesitant or even flat out refuse to touch Helldivers 2 for the sole fact that the game is a third person shooter when they much prefer first person. I myself usually dislike the vast majority of third person shooters I've touched with very few exceptions. But Helldivers 2 gameplay and combat is so smooth that not only did I almost not even notice from the get-go, I don't even think I would want a first-person option at this point. There is a way to aim your weapons in first-person when playing the game, and while some people like it, I don't even use it. Another complaint I find kind of odd is that Helldivers does not feature PvP in any capacity. Does this have multiplayer PvP? Yeah, watch. I'm out. <laughs> what? What? 
It's true, Helldivers 2 is straight co-op across the board, but I would rather have a game do less things well than offer a wide range of options that are half-baked just to bring in more players. The game devs have gone on the record more than one time that they have zero plans to add traditional PvP to Helldivers 2, and not only do I think that's the right call, I salute them for not caving to pressure and sticking to their current formula, which clearly is working for them. Others have complained that while Helldivers 2 has a free battle pass, it also has a premium battle pass that can be unlocked by spending real, actual money. And while that is true, the premium battle pass can also be fully unlocked by spending in-game currency earned literally through playing the game. Combine that with the fact that so far nothing in the premium battle pass IMO even comes close to being hard meta, it doesn't really bother me. In fact, GG on Arrowhead for giving players the option to unlock it via straight up grinding. The gunplay is satisfying and calling in a stratagem to blow half your enemies to kingdom come feels good each and every time you do it. There is some concern that once the majority of the player base unlocks everything there is to unlock, that maybe people will be less incentivized to play and grind with no carrot to chase. I think that is a fair concern, but Arrowhead could potentially add new enemy types, new planets, new rewards, new cosmetics, new weapons, new stratagems, and more to keep people interested. And for the record, I think they absolutely will do that. But even in the very unlikely event that they don't, in my opinion, this game would still be very worth the $40 price tag. It ain't all daisies and rainbows though, the game does have issues. Even when the servers weren't getting bent over a barrel, quick play has been touch and go. Half the time I find it works, and half the time it doesn't. I've had teammates get stuck inside of rocks after dropping into the map, along with other weird stuff like looting a vault and not being able to move, and needing a friend to melee or grenade me out of being stuck. Also, and this is not news to anyone, the servers have been taking a huge beating, leading some players not being able to log on and play at all. And even though these issues are definitely annoying, I'm hoping that it's just a temporary case of suffering from success and the devs eventually get to the point where they handle the massive surprise demand for their new game. I've also found that the gunplay, while fun, ain't super balanced right now. In the early game, the breaker shotgun is unlocked fairly quickly and smashes through everything that doesn't have armor like wet cardboard. In fact, 60 plus hours of gameplay later and I still main the damn thing. On the other hand, in the late game, the railgun is so stupidly good I almost can't fathom going into any mission on any difficulty and not bringing it as it straight up feels like the best power option for miles. And yeah, there are other armor breaking weapons, but the railgun has a 20 mag, is a hit scan weapon, and it has the awesome unsafe mode which can take its damage output even higher. I feel like it's so good, I actually can't imagine how Arrowhead would want me to play certain endgame content without the freaking thing glued to my stupid hands 24-7. Quick note to my regular viewers by the way, I have no current plans to abandon D2 if you were worried about that for whatever reason. I still plan on grinding up to and through the final shape and will continue to upload content to this channel. However, don't be surprised if some Helldivers content finds its way in here and there. To those who are watching wondering if they should pick up Helldivers either as a game to main or just a side piece, I'd say that it depends on what kind of stuff you already play. If you're a fan of co-op shooter games, in my opinion, this is a gigantic no-brainer. However, even if you're not a huge fan of the shooter genre, but you still do enjoy fun game night with the homies, believe it or not, this actually may be worth a try for you. If you strongly prefer games built around a good solo experience, then this isn't gonna be for you, and that's okay. To me, the game has earned a respectable and rare accolade, a side game I enjoy enough to want to actually fire it up and play in my downtime, even if I'm not making content on it, which is very rare. Helldivers 2 is enjoyable, straightforward, fun with friends, respectful of your time, appropriately priced, and I give it a glorious victory out of 10. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.